David Allen. How are you doing, sir? Uh, terrific. Thanks. Cool. So you are a productivity expert and the author of the book, Getting Things Done. Um, for the uninitiated, what is Getting Things Done? The, getting Things Done is really defining the best practice of keeping thing, everything out of your head so that you don't have the stress of having it all in here, having a much more objective inventory of all your commitments and everything you need to do. So it just gets for getting things done with a lot less effort when you do that. So the book came out about 10 years ago or so, and it was early on it was embraced by the tech industry. What was that? Was that expected and expected result? Kind of unexpected. And on, on the afterthought, I understand why. The tech folks are just a, almost as lazy as I am. <laughs> they love whole systems. And actually what my methodology does is it turbocharges their cool gear. Yeah. <laughs> gives, them, gives them much better way to make them more productive, all that cool stuff they actually like to work with. Right. So you mentioned that you're lazy, tech people are lazy. How does getting things done make a lazy person more productive? Well, if you, if you want to get something done, you want to do it with as little psychic and physical effort as possible. Okay. I do. I wake up in the morning and say, how much easier can I get from here to there? So getting things done is really about not having to rethink anything, not having to have a thought more than once, right. and being able, with the least amount of effort, to go, what does done look like, and what does doing look like, and where does that happen, and how do I make sure I set it up so I don't have to look for things, don't have to keep remembering about stuff, and don't feel stressed about it. A lot of times, see, people attention is distracted by a lot of things they've mismanaged. And what you want is you want to be able to put your attention clearly and freely on what you want, when you want, the way you want, and have a clear head. That's a cool place to be, and that's what this methodology facilitates. And that gets you to be productive, which is great. Sure. So. <laughs> well, being productive just means you want to get something done that you want to get done. So if you go on a vacation to relax and you're not relaxed, that's unproductive. But being able to get from here to there and produce stuff with as little amount of energy as possible, that's a lot easier to do when you're concentrated, when you're focused, when you're not distracted. Right, absolutely. Another tool that's been used to help get things done has been the, the uh, mobile phones and smartphones that have emerged over the past couple of years, iPhones, Android phones. And you know, as I'm a user of getting things done, the methodology, I've always looked for applications that apply that methodology to these phones. Have you had a chance to play with any of these applications? Or? I, I played with some. God, they're coming out every day, as yeah. you know. I mean, there's like, well, there's two more that exactly. must, have, must have shown up now. <laughs> Frankly, what they, the, the functionality in the phones, there's lots of functionalities. Yeah. It's, a, it's a reference material with your contacts. It's a communication device with the phone itself and with email and, and surfing the web. So there's a lot of different things you can do for it. I think the real application that you're talking about is the list management capability and functionality of these things. So anything that can make a list, I mean, heck, I had a Palm when they first came out. And that was, that was one of the coolest little tools in the world because it was a very simple thing. You just need a, a simple way to be able to manage lists, to input to them and to retrieve them. And so that's usually what most people are talking about with these apps. They're really just list managers, if you will. You're absolutely right. I mean, I've seen the majority of the GTD apps tend to be you know, glorified to-do list managers. Um, but they're all kind of under the GTD banner. Uh, how does it feel to see a whole uh, vertical of applications based off your methodology? <laughs> I, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, there's just the fact that, that, that uh, what, what I did was really uncover and synthesize the core principles about what we do when things really work for us anyway. Yeah. Everybody in the world knows when you get overwhelmed, you get confused, you make a list, you feel better. Yep. I just figured that out. Well, if that's true, then don't keep anything in your head so you feel better all the time. <laughs> I know that's a radical approach, but, and, and by the way, the functionality of the, the smartphones, they're really two key elements, and they're really different elements. I think it's important to distinguish those. One, the first stage of how you get things under control using GTD is to capture things that have your attention. Something that's potentially meaningful. You give me a restaurant that I might want to do something about, or I say I'm going to get back to you, Ron, about this, that, or the other. I need to capture some placeholder for that, some trigger. Later on, I'll figure out exactly what I want to do with it, or if I want to do anything at all, but I need the capture function. Yeah. So that's a lot of the cool thing about having something on your belt or something at hand, and I can capture, and a lot of people like to do that. They like to thumb it in, they index it in, record it in, and those are, those are capture tools. Tools. That's actually very different than the other function, which is once I decide, once I look at what I've captured, I say, oh, I need to make a call about that. Then a reminder to make the call goes on those kinds of lists we're talking about. Right. So you don't want to get those confused. The one function is a capture function, 
and the other is a list manager function. For instance, my capture function, I don't use my BlackBerry, which is my, my PDA. Okay. You know, I use a, the David Allen note taker wallet that we designed because <laughs> it's just a whole lot easier to grab a pen and write it down, I found. It's more ubiquitous, not only that, the yeah. paper's in my face so that when I tear this off, throw it into my, into my own end basket, it's going ding, 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 but I have to then make a decision about that. Tricky business about the PDAs is out of sight, out of mind. So you have to have a lot of discipline. It still works. I've done it that way too, using recording devices, but you have to be very careful about that. When you dump it in there, you make sure it doesn't go into some black hole. Yeah, exactly, because the, you can turn the phone off. You can turn your computer off. I mean, I know that sure. was the challenge I had when I was working with um, OmniFocus, was that I just minimized the window on my desktop or I closed the app and Sure. I, I don't have to do that work then. Sure. But I still do. <laughs> okay. Well, also, this doesn't need batteries, you sure. know, so, yeah. you know, it doesn't need a signal, you yeah. know, so, so there are still some advantages to this. But again, you know, I, I do use my BlackBerry yeah. because actually I use the desktop app for the most part, but it's nice to sync the desktop list to these lists in case I need it when I'm out. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think it might be a mistake to think you can actually manage your life here. If you have a fairly complex life, I want a much bigger screen. I want a m much more, you know, uh, facility to be able to tap into other things around it while I'm going through my materials and thinking. Right. But the results of that thinking wind up on these lists and then it's nice to have a, you know, a, a distributed way to be able to have reminders in that way. Sure, it becomes a tool that you can take with you. But actually that's something I wanted to bring up because a lot of people, you know, they get the iPhone, they get their Android phone, they get their Blackberry and they say, okay, I'm going to get my life in the organized and I'm going to control, I'm going to download this app, it's going to fix everything. <laughs> but it's a little more complicated than that, right? <laughs> well, it, it's not, you know, don't shoot the messenger. It's a, yeah. it, You do need a system, yeah. but the real key is you need to make sure you've captured everything and clarified what you're going to do about it because that creates the content that then goes on these systems. Right. You know, most people's lists are quite frankly incomplete lists of unclear things. Right. And most people's organization is just rearranging incomplete piles of still unclear stuff. If that's what you're trying to use your smartphone for, good luck. Yeah. And then it'll die just as fast as a, a, a paper planner will die as anything will die. You really need to have it complete so that the psyche then has the payoff of having it being able to relax. And you want to use your intelligence to be making choices off of your options, not to try to remember them. So if you're going to use it, use it and find something that turns you on that's cool enough to totally invest in it. Because if it's only partially done, you're probably not going to stay motivated to do it. When your inner geek shows up on a rainy Saturday, it will work. But yeah. Monday, when you're in the fire hose of reality, you know, you better make sure that these, there's no barrier to entry to using these things and you truly are using it for distributed cognition, as they, as right. they call it. Exactly. So the, the, one, the one area of GTD that I had the biggest challenge with personally and what I've seen other people have with is just getting started, is doing that inventory and starting off. Like, so yeah. do you have any tips for anybody who wants to get in, you know, uh, out, they've read the book, I want to get on this methodology, but then the idea is so daunting to get started. You know, the best thing to do is make sure you get yourself a physical end basket, get yourself a big pad of paper, and just yeah. do a huge core dump. Yeah. Get it all out. Do it low tech. Don't try, don't try to use your, your cool tool yeah. for that because you want the freedom to just dump it all out and not feel too formal about it that it has to be organized when you get it out. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't get it all out. So you want to over just dump. Just get it all out. Then you can sit down with your cool gear yeah. and figure out, okay, now as I go through with that, oh, that's a phone call. Let me make a calls list. Oh, that's a project. I need a list of my projects. Then you have a way to use your gear. So also, if you're getting brand new gear, learn the gear first. <laughs> yeah. Don't try to do all of this at the same time. You don't want to, you don't want to have a resistance to knowing how, that's, that, how that thing works. So practice making a list, practice you know, th that so you know what the technology is. Do a low-tech dump out here. Then you can start to translate into, into that system. And I think that's the combination that will work. So aside from your notebook, your little notepad, which I subscribe to as well, I carry, carry paper and pens all the time. But um, are there any other tools, you know, whether they're apps or online tools or anything that you use? Well, that any you kind know? of recording device will yeah. do it too. Yeah. So most of the smartphones have a recording device. Some of them harder to get into than others. So, yeah. you know, again, it has to be really, really easy to do. And I've used them when they had that. Uh, it, it, just little digital tape, little digital recorders. Those yeah. will work as well. Um, I used Jot. Jot got acquired. And Jot was a that. very, very cool thing, especially when I'm in my car. It's mapped to my phone automatically. Hit a speed key, you know, call Jot, and, and then in five minutes it's in my emails as a trigger a in service. my face. That Fabulous so service. Cool. And I, I think actually I just did a seminar here in San Francisco a couple of days ago, and I mentioned that, and I, got, I had a couple of people. It's still in my inbox. Got a couple of notes of some new apps or some apps they suggested that might be replacements. So, yeah. you know, you could help me out. You guys can uh, we'll can look out. into that and see <laughs> see see what would replace it. But basically, calling a service, having them 
partial AI and partial transcription, and then you know about your recording, and then it just comes back and you know in two or three minutes and into your email. So that's a that's a great function. I love I, I love that because it's in your face. It doesn't disappear, and it comes back in a place that's pretty obvious. Right. Do you ever foresee a uh, time where you'll drop the notepad and go completely digital and go completely? I, potentially, <laughs> potentially. Hey, well, come on. You want to talk talk about? Let's look at the future. I think yeah. HP or somebody finally has come up with something. I knew the technology was there when I was in aerospace in the 80s, where they were designing mylar flexible mylar computer screens. Yep. So now HP, I understand, has had come up with something I saw a few months ago. It's this this flexible mylar computer screen, yep. where where your paper actually may be like a computer, so that it's live, so you can be writing on it and it's going into the clouds. I mean, that, that's a, a kind of a fantasy, but you know how, how many things that we're using now were fantasies exactly. not long ago. Exactly, ten years ago that we'd be able to carry a computer in our hand and be able to manage these, then upload it to sure. some other server. But yeah. uh, quite frankly, there. It, it, you, you, Paper matches the way the brain works in a, an interesting way. I know a lot of high-tech people that are, are now going back to or hybriding paper. Oftentimes, I will print stuff off the computer because it's easier to manipulate paper for, for other reasons. Yeah. So I think the interface between the two, be able to take a note here, stick it down here, suddenly that's digitalized, right. or make it as easy and functional to write on it like paper. I mean, that, the, the palm was almost as good as that because the handwriting with yeah. the palm, you know, I got so good at that, I could write just about as fast on the palm as I could on paper, and that worked really well. Yeah. So, yeah, it's coming, I guess. Well, you know, Rest in peace, things. Palm. We miss Palm. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, was a great, yeah, it was a great yeah, service yeah, at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, but, really. But, and and there, there were always, like I was showing you beforehand, where some interface changes, like on Android with Swipe, and, yeah. uh, and um, some of our devices have that, where you can, it's changing the way we're interfacing. But I agree with you, there's that tangible aspect to paper and to actually a notebook and things like that, and it's the merging of the two platforms. Well, you need to, uh, well, let's talk behaviorally. Yeah. You need to be able to capture anything, anytime, anywhere. Yeah. So grabbing a pen and writing on the back of an envelope or toilet paper or Kleenex or whatever. I can't tell you how many things I've written on that was absolutely critical and to have to trust that I had to have only one device to be able to do that. Yeah. Once you understand capture and the ubiquity of it and the necessity of the ubiquity of it, man, anything will work. Yeah. So, you know, you don't, I wouldn't get too wrapped around the axle about which way you do that. Yeah, exactly. Trust me, I try to get phone numbers on my phone. Sometimes <laughs> if you're in the club, it doesn't work. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, that about wraps it up. So thank you so much, David, for your time. Appreciate it. I know we're both very busy. We've got stuff they need to get done. Uh, so where can people find you? Well, our website, davidco.com slash info, uh, has lots of free articles about this stuff, some best practices. You can follow me on Twitter, GTD guy. Yep. You know, uh, lots of folks hanging out with me there. That's a great place to be, yeah, absolutely. And gddtimes.com, our blog. Uh, free and easy way to play. Cool. Well, you've made my life a lot more productive, so thank you very much. We appreciate it. I am delighted to. Thanks. Take care.